Andy and Paul returned to Bradshaw Ranch to meet with former resident John Bradshaw and his son, Mason. They're following up on reports of covert government activity close to Bradshaw Ranch. So, you know, Andy and I were just saying, we've talked to you and so many other people about the UFO sightings out here, the orbs, you know, all the other mysteries, but there's a big question about stories about secret military operations. Well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of rumors and speculations and stories, and uh, I think there's a little bit of truth with each story that there is. And supposedly there is a um, military site that is back over here in these rocks over here on this side called Secret Canyon. So this is a good spot to kind of show you the house a little bit. And then you can see the window from the kitchen is that first window, and it looks directly at that tree. And uh, right in that tree, my stepmom, Linda, and my dad, um, they took a picture of a portal that they got from the kitchen window. Right, yeah. So that tree pretty much was the backdrop for that portal. The sign at the gate to get onto the ranch, they have a little sign saying that it's uh, to study Western plants and animals, which is kind of weird to me because they have a big fence that they put up all the way around the property. Right. One of the things that it's interesting to me, Paul, is that yeah. we've, got, we've got new locks here. Like, this is maintained. Yeah. And when I look at the house, if you look at the air ducts on the house, you can see that they're modernized and they're sturdy, which if we had rangers living here, I would expect that. But if nobody's living here, I would expect those to show more signs of age. I see some of the large equipment that they have over here as well. We've got an oversized solar panel. It's got underground electrical wiring. This is a facility that could run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without anybody from the outside tampering with it. This could be a controlled research environment. Or yeah, the question is for what? It could be a contained terrarium. Right. And they're watching whatever's inside here. Or it could be that they're keeping an eye on where Linda and Bob saw the portal. Yeah, well, you know, you, you start putting all those things that are weird together, and pretty soon you, you want to know what's going on. Right. Andy and Paul head to a ridge line overlooking Bradshaw Ranch, called Bradshaw Ridge, to meet with local tour guide Joe Acapinti, who's reported strange experiences there. So, you're a tour guide? I am. Okay. I do off-road Jeep tours up here. Um, I run these trails daily. I uh, know them like the back of my hand. Yeah. And since I've been doing that, I heard about a lot of the lore out here in the Sedona area. Not this past summer, so probably 13 months ago. So I had a couple active duty Marines out on one of my Jeep tours. We were taking some pictures. They were out here with their girlfriends, and one of them had a drone. And he asked if he could take some aerial shots of themselves. And I said, absolutely. He got it about 75 to 100 yards out, straight out here. And he had his iPhone set in a, a joystick holder, and that's how he controlled it. And I looked at the camera, and he said, look at this. The camera feed had shut off, and it said restricted airspace, drone returning, and the drone flew right back to us. And I said, well, fly it out there again. He got it to the same exact spot. Same thing happened, camera feed cut off, said restricted airspace, drone returning. And that um, he, happened right here? That happened right, right here. Right where we're standing? Right where we're standing. He had told me when he signed up for the terms of service and bought the drone that it said, if you're anywhere around an airport or a military base, it's restricted airspace, the drone won't work. There's no military base out there that we could see. No, absolutely not. If it happened right here, we have a drone right now. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Hey, Fernando, uh, do you mind donating that drone to the cause? Not at all. So it sounds like what we're looking for is 75 to 100 meters in this direction? Yep, just straight out. So far, so good? No. Uh, yeah. Um, getting sent home. What's what, the really? What's the yeah. mm -hmm. It's returning home. Look at that. So RTH is returned yeah, to home? It's, hunt it's coming back. And that's automatic? Yeah. It's satellite control, 100%. So it would definitely come back if I entered any kind of restricted space. So you're not flying it now. That's automatic. No, it's coming back. My CIA training tells me that there is something being hidden. Something is being protected. But what? It doesn't say it's a restricted air zone on the map. There's nothing here that we can visually see that would confirm that it's a restricted zone. There's something strange happening here. Paul and Andy's next target is Bradshaw Ridge where Joe Acapinti had his mysterious orb encounter. Along with Joe, they've called in Skinwalker Ranch veterans Tim Anderson and Jeremy Fenton from New Salt Laser to poke the hornet's nest by lighting up the mountains with lasers. 
The kind of the heartbeat of this experiment, Joe, is that we want to fill the environment with light energy. Any kind of military monitoring, whether it's automated or whether it's manned, is going to see this light activity and it's going to react. React, yeah, sure. In addition to the laser test, Andy and Paul are also deploying multiple scientific tools to monitor any possible anomalies on the ground or in the sky. OK, lasers on. We've got lasers. Our systems are running. All systems go. We have an error. Huh. Whoa. Well, that's. We lost it all, Paul. Look at yeah, that. What's going on? Everything is failing right now. Right, except for the FLIR, which is running completely independently. Completely independent on battery. We're having trouble with the laser connection as well. It's kind of strange because everything was working so well the last time we used yeah. it. I almost hesitate to say it, but is it possible that someone scanned this area, picked up on us, and is somehow closing us down? I can't rule it out. We've done experiments in Bradshaw Ranch, and we've seen equipment struggles in the past, but nothing like this. Oh, and we're back. Yep, That's right. As fast as possible, I would love to get lasers on. I was going to say we should get the lasers up. Because I don't know how long any of this is going to last. Let's light it up. Yeah, lasers are scanning. Look at that as soon as the lasers came on. So right now we're at 1.603 here. That just started now? It just started. 1.6 is what they see at Skinwalker. Correct. 1.6 gigahertz is an interstellar communication signal. Anybody on Earth who is a professional treats 1.6 as a privileged frequency right. that's only used for communication from Earth to space and space to Earth. The fact that we're seeing this transmission right now, when we were not seeing this transmission earlier, right. is significant. The only thing I can think of, these are radio frequencies that are available only to the military to co-op. So it's almost as if it was being picked up and then rebroadcast to us on a military bandwidth. On a bandwidth that's available Bill only, to, to, only to, the, to the military. Holy What is that? But this isn't a civilian band, right? It's not. It sounded like some weird radio transmission. This is outside of any AM or FM bands. There should not be civilian radio traffic in this 1.6 gigahertz range. What the hell? I don't know what this is. Is the space cannon still available to us? Yeah, the space cannon is ready to go. I feel like if we're seeing a signal on radio frequencies coming from space, let's fill up the sky with the, the strongest energy that we can fill it up with. Absolutely. Let's use a space cannon laser. Let's do it. I'll turn it on. OK. The laser space cannon is the brightest RGB colored laser in the world, powered by over 1 million milliwatts. In the right conditions, this laser can be seen from space. Go ahead and ignite it. Wow. Wow. Very cool. Oh, man, if that doesn't look like we're sending a signal, <laughs> I don't know what does. If there is any kind of government or military anything back there, they are not going to appreciate that at all. Nope. Cool. Oh, Paul, check this out. What is this? Listen to this. We're at 730 megahertz. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? That's feeding back now. It's just going over and over. Wait, so help me out. I'm just I'm not comprehending what's happening here. We are not transmitting that. We are not transmitting that. We are picking up the signal that is being reflected back to us, that's being sent back at us. What this is telling me is that if we are not broadcasting on 730 megahertz, somebody is listening to us, and the reflection back to them is carrying at 730 megahertz. And we're able to pick that up. And we're and able to it. pick that up. What? Seriously. That's not comforting at all. 